Hello, could I speak to Mr. Ewan Herbert Small, please? May I ask who's calling, please? Yeah, my name is Robert Marsh. I'm calling from the Home Office Nationality Department in Liverpool. Hi. Is that Mr. Herbert Small? Yes, it is. Yes, Hello indeed. there. Hi. I've been asked to give you a call because I believe that you've got an inquiry over British citizenship and right of abode in the United Kingdom. And I'm wondering whether I might be able to discuss that with you and maybe give you some advice. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah um, I believe that um, you were born in St. Kitts, is that correct? Yes, in 1980? I was. Yes, I was. Yeah, were your mother and father born there as well? Yes, indeed. And your grandfather and your grandparents, both sets of your grandparents were born there, yes, is that indeed. right? Okay, and I believe that your grand, your grand, one of your grandparents came to the UK, your grandfather, in about the 1950s, is that correct? Indeed. That's right. Okay. Um, yeah. Just to just to really run through um, just how you know the British citizenship is derived and how how people obtain right to abode. Um, in all, basically, when you were born in St Kitts, you would have been a citizen of the United Kingdom and colonies, because at that point St Kitts was part of the UK and colonies at that time. Okay. So under Section 4 of the British Nationality Act 1948, you would have been as a citizen of the United Kingdom and colonies. Now, on the 1st of January 1983, the British Nationality Act of 1981 came into force, and that actually introduced for the first time British citizenship. Now, in order to become a British citizen, you would have had to have been a citizen of the United Kingdom and colonies, but also would have had to have had right of abode in the United Kingdom. Okay, so you had to have two two elements to become a British citizen: citizenship of the United Kingdom and colonies before 1983, and right of abode before 1983. Now, as somebody born in St Kitts, as I say, you would have been a citizen of the United Kingdom and colonies, but we then need to work out whether or not you have right of abode. Now, as far as I can see, um, it's only your grandfather who came to the UK. Is that correct? But before 1983. Yeah, my grandfather came here in 1955. 65, sorry. 55, so, 55. 55. Right, I understand. So, what he would have, what, what he probably would have done is, if he would have been here, free of immigration conditions and ordinary resident in the United Kingdom for a period of five years or more, then he would have obtained right of abode in his own right under Section 21C of the Immigration Act 1971. And if he was a CUKC or citizen of the United Kingdom and colonies, and he had right of abode under Section 21C of the Immigration Act, then on the 1st of January 1983, he would have become a British citizen. Okay? Now, when St. Kitts went independent, which um, I think was um, in later on in 1983, um, anybody who was already a British citizen would have retained that status. But the thing with right of abode under Section 21C is that you can't pass it on to children or grandchildren. In order to get right of abode under Section 21C, it's something that you have to do yourself. You would have had to have been resident in the UK for a period of five years. So if there's, if there's no sort of connection by birth to the United Kingdom, there would be no right of abode that you could have derived from your grandparents. So you would not have become a British citizen on the 1st of January 1983. Do you understand that, what, what I'm sort of saying to you? No. no. I don't understand Would, would that. you like me to put it in writing to you? Yes, I would like you to put it in writing. Certainly I will. But I would um, also would like you... you to consider... Yeah. I would also like you to consider that my grandfather yeah. was not required to naturalize or register in the United Kingdom. That's However... Right. However, an alien or a foreign national, even a Commonwealth citizen who had the right of abode under Section 21D, could register or naturalize in the United Kingdom and upgrade yeah. their status to 21A. You are yeah. aware of that, okay? Well, that's right, because if you're a Commonwealth citizen with a UK-born parent, then, you're, then you get your right of abode through your connection to the United Kingdom. Not, so, ne not necessarily. I mean, you have Commonwealth citizens who had the right of abode in the United Kingdom because yeah. they were here, even as CUKCs, and then their country became independent. Yeah, so if, if, 
a lot, I mean, obviously, a lot of people came to the United Kingdom before their, their country of birth became an indep independent Indeed. Commonwealth country. So once they acquired um, five years' residence, they would have also had the right to abode. That's um, right. But, but, it, but their, their right to abode is derived by their own residence in the UK. Indeed. I, I hear what you're saying, because yeah. what you're saying to me is yeah. that my grandfather had it in his own right. That's okay? right, yeah. And so whose right? Did 21A have it in and 21B? Well, 21A, if, 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 if I can go through that with you now if you want. I mean, 21A is quite clear. What it says is that in order to derive rights of abode under Section 21A of the Immigration Act, you have to be born, registered, naturalized, or adopted in the United Kingdom. Right. Now, the so, United Kingdom is only England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and the Channel Islands. Right. So can I stop you right there? Yeah. So you're saying to me, my grandfather couldn't register or naturalize, right? No, he could. He, he couldn't. He couldn't at the time before 1983. He could not have registered or naturalized as because, a citizen of the United Kingdom and colonies because he was because already, he back. already was one. Yes, and he had the right yeah. to vote in the United Kingdom under Section 21C, which was through his own residence. But you're saying but to me, he, but he didn't have he didn't have right to vote. Through a birth connection to but the what, United but, Kingdom. But, but effectively, what you're saying to me is yep. that you gave aliens more rights than an existing citizen. That is what you're saying to me. Well, I by don't definition. think so, no. Well, by definition. So, theoretically, theoretically, if he was a Commonwealth citizen and not a citizen of the United Kingdom but had the right to vote, or even if he was a Commonwealth citizen, or if he was German, or... I don't know, Argentinian. He, he, he yeah, could have naturalized. He could have naturalized in the United Kingdom as an alien or foreign national, naturalize here, become a CUKC, and get more rights than an existing CUKC with the right of abode. That is effectively what you're saying. Well, yeah, because the, the, the citizenship of the United Kingdom and colonies, if you obtain that citizenship, through your own connection to the United Kingdom, then obviously under the Immigration Act, that would then allow your, your right of your right of abode will be under Section 21A, as opposed to 21C. But the the issue is here is that what we're talking about is being able to pass right of abode on. Now, as I say, be, because there is no UK connection. So in relation to a birth or Yeah, or I, I get that. I get that. I get all yeah. of that, what you're saying. Well, I, but, I, I mean, I, obviously... Sorry, go ahead. What I was going to say to you. Yeah. So, a person born, registered, or naturalized in the United Kingdom, or adopted, yeah. 21A, yeah. moves to, I don't know, Australia, South Africa, yeah. in 1930, has a child there in 1950. That child has a right of abode in the United Kingdom to, under Section 21B. 21B1, yeah. Right. That child born there in 1950 perhaps has another child yes in that country and acquires the right of abode section 21b2 yes correct? that is a possibility yeah. after 1983 both sections 21b and 21b2 were upgraded to 21a is that correct yes indeed and so that child and grandchild having never set foot in this country are both upgraded to 21a and that grandchild can then transmit British citizenship another generation. No. Oh, no, no, hang on. No, there's, there's a difference between right of abode and citizenship. With regard to, in order to, if you were born before 1983, in order to have become a British citizen, yeah, you would then have had to have been, as I said before, a citizen of the United Kingdom and colonies and have held right of abode. In, right, right. right but that, abode but they would have been... That would have been a British uh, uh, citizen of the UK and colonies by descent, Section 5 of the 1948 Act, born overseas. Is that not correct? If they were born overseas, yes. and, and one of the parents, their father was a citizen of the United Kingdom and colonies at mm -hmm. that time, mm -hmm. then they would have an entitlement under 5 1. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so what I'm saying to you is after 1983, 21B1 and 21B2, according to the charts that I've seen on your website, but, it, but in order to get 21B1 and 21B2, they would also have to have been C citizens of the United yes, Kingdom. Yes, and, 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 and most well. likely they would have been registered 
at a British consulate overseas, which was the like advice given. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, to a lot of people at that time, notwithstanding, yeah. notwithstanding um, yeah. the British Nationality Act, 1964. Yeah. And I mean, I. 64 number two okay so yeah I, just, I, think, I, just want, I think the issue mm -hmm. the issue that we've got actually is what what you're describing to me is a, a, are anomalies within the legislation all i can do is explain to you what the legislation but says i know what, what i know what the legislation I says i don't need explanation what the right. effect is the effect is a continued discrimination right. that is the effect that a discrimination that is continued because yeah. a cukc is what my yeah. grandfather was. He had yes, the he right was. of abode in the United Kingdom. What else does he need? Theoretically, well, he, theoretically, theoretically, yes, he would but have the, to but renounce. But the question is, under the under the under the, the legislation, under the law, what can he then do with that status? Now, as a as a citizen of the United Kingdom and colonies, he's acquired right of abode in his own right. Okay. But 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 you saying Be, that because in he his own from right, from whose in, right? Yeah. Whose right? Did 21A and 21B, did they not have it in their own right? Because the connection, right? because under 21A and 21B, there has to be a connection back to the United Kingdom. Well, not this to, is the connection. My what, grandfather to, had a connection before 1971. Only to his residence. Listen carefully. He had a, only, he had, he had a, he had a right of abode before 1971. Okay, long before that. And you're saying only through his residence. Well, then a person who qualified for naturalization qualified for naturalization through their residence. They they would have they would have acquired citizen of the United Kingdom and colony status. They could have naturalized. They could have registered, but they would have done that by having a connection and some form of residence in the United Kingdom. Wait, wait, sorry. Now, the, now as I've said to you, the United Kingdom only it, it, it only relates to. England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and the Channel Islands. It does not extend to other countries such as St. Kitts, which were part of the United Kingdom and colonies at that time. So when, you, when we're talking about the Immigration Act, it, quite makes, it makes a distinction between connections to the United Kingdom and then those people who were citizens of the United Kingdom and colonies, not through a direct connection to the UK, but have come to the UK to live. So I have a and question. And that is where c comes in. I have a question. So yeah. what you're saying to me, effectively, is that my grandfather coming here as a citizen of the UK and colonies and with the, and acquired his right of abode, reacquired it because he had it before. Okay? He had it before at common law. Is no, that not right? The, the, the right of abode, Actually, the concept of right to abode actually only came in with the Immigration Act. No, on the no, first I'm sorry. Immigration Act. Yeah, no, before that, the, the, you, you could be freely landed. You could come to the UK. Well, that's the right You would abode. not be subject to, to... Yeah, but what, what we're talking about here is the effect of the Immigration Act 1971, which came into force on the 1st of January 1973. Yes, and I, that, I'm, I'm that actually described how people acquired the right of abode in the United Kingdom. I am aware of what you're saying, but what yeah. I'm saying to you is that even on your website, I'll, I'll point it out, even on your website, you explain persons who had the right of abode at common law, all British subjects had that right. And Lord Diplock explained that yeah. in, in, in a case in the, in, the, in the appeals court, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, all okay. Commonwealth citizens or, or all British subjects before 1962, had a right to abode in the United so, Kingdom. Yeah, they could come to the UK and they would not be subject to immigration control. Right, yeah. that's a right to abode. So my grandfather had that before 71 and then after 71. But what I'm saying to you is yeah. he could not upgrade that status. So theoretically, theoretically, he would have had to renounce his citizenship of the UK and colonies. And then reapply. And yeah. then reapply, right? Yeah. That's the theory. Yeah, now, so I now, think... I think Mm -hmm. Sorry, go on. Go ahead. Before I finish, that's the yeah. theory. But in retrospect, how would he know that he was required to do that? And furthermore, how would I know that he would not have just been resumed under the resumption provisions of the 48 Act and resumed as the same thing? The same way he was um, yeah. asked, exactly, asked I, for 
um, employment letters and all these kinds of things. That was, he was not subject to any of that. In his passport, it shows to bring letter from employer. Why is that there? He was not required to do that. Yeah. He was not on a voucher scheme. Yeah. Yeah. There was. Um, yeah. Go on. No, sorry. I, w I was going to say. I think. I think the issue. The, the, the well, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what the issue is before you figure it out. The issue is racism and discrimination. My friend came here from Grenada in 63. Grenada got independence in 74. Okay, that's nine, uh, 11 years before independence, right? Yeah. He has the entry clearance stamp in his passport. For many years, nobody would give him anything. He's got it now. And what I'm trying to say to you is that he had that entry clearance in his passport stamped 1963. Why did he need entry clearance when citizens of the UK and colonies were not restricted from entry into the United Kingdom until 68? Well, I can't answer that. Exactly. The document. Exactly. I think, I think the, 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 pro, the, the, the issue that we're at now is that all I can do is explain to you what the legislation well, I don't says. need an explanation. And, 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 I know yeah, what the well, legislation this, says. It has now become apparent to me that you're already aware of what I'm telling you. Exactly. Your issue would appear to be the anomalies within the legislation, and I can't answer that for it's you. It's not what an I'm anomaly. Do, it's an interpretation. It's the way you're looking yeah. at it, the way it's been applied, the way the policies have yeah. been set. The way the policies have been set is the reason why 220 people are going to Croydon on a daily basis. Well, when I was there, I was 195 in the queue, and, yeah. and they had all the paperwork, and nothing's changed in the legislation apart from um, amendments for the fees to be free for these applications. Right. There's no other changes, but then at the same time, these people weren't getting any status, and they had yeah. their, their, their clear documentation. So this is clearly racism and discrimination. Well, what I can do, I mean, the, I think the be best thing that I can do is I'm going to have to pass this on to probably one of my senior officers. Because I think what you need, you no, know, what you need is not somebody like me to explain what the legislation says. Exactly. Because it's quite clear that you're already aware of that. Exactly. But what you need is someone to address your particular issues about what you perceive as to the application of the legislation in relation to people like yourself. And that is not something that I can discuss with you today, mm. because all I can discuss is the actual technical issues regarding the application of the Immigration Act and the British Nationality Act. Mm. And that's not something that you, you need, I don't think, because no. you're already aware of that. Indeed. You need somebody to address the, the actual issues that you are bringing up with regard to the application of that legislation. I'm very much aware of it, and I think somebody um, else in the Home Office is very much aware of it, is why I'm still in the United Kingdom. Yeah. But... At the same time, applications for passports were construed as applications for citizenship. I've read that, and I, I'm, I'm sure I can find that. And so my grandfather had his passport renewed here in London by the Foreign Office in 1966. Yeah. That's before the 68 Act even came into force. That's right. I mean, because at that time, so, he would have been a citizen of the UK. So colonies, yeah? if we're going to talk technical, technicalities, technically, having that British passport issued here in London, in the United yeah. Kingdom, a United Kingdom passport as well, even though the ones in the colonies are United Kingdom passports, according to Section yeah. 33 of the 71 Act, he must be equal to registration then. You have him in a register, else you wouldn't give him a passport. Yeah, but that, that passport would have been issued on the basis of the status that he already held at that particular point in time. My point exactly. As a citizen of the UK and colonies. I think <clears throat> what I'm going to have to do, Mr. Herbert Small, is obviously... Um, so you degraded maybe, his rights then, even though he was here rebuilding yeah. this nation after yeah. it was blitzed to pieces. This is what I'm getting out of my telephone, and, okay. is that my grandfather came here to rebuild this nation, Windrush generation, and got fewer yeah. rights than an alien. An alien came here and got more rights than he did. How can you guys tell me this for 15 years? How can you be telling me this? All I can say is what the legislation says. Now, I can't, I can't obviously answer There's no pragmatic the approach issues. to this? There's no common the, sense? No, because the, 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 the legislation says what it says. The and legislation says... That. I have no discretion over that. Okay. Let me tell you okay. exactly what the legislation says before you go. The legislation says... Section 21C says, yeah. a CUKC, yeah. resident in the United Kingdom, free of in immigration controls, five years or more, ordinarily yeah. resident here, settled 
whichever, and he was settled in two different forms, isn't it? That's Section right. one five, Section two one C, two different forms settled here. Okay, he's a CUKC. Common sense must apply here. He has the full rights of two one B and two one B two and A above him, two one A. It is why he's equal to two one A anyway. No, and because two one A says that in order to have two one A. And then by extension 21B1 and 21B2, you have to be a citizen of the United Kingdom and colonies who has that citizenship by his birth, adoption, naturalization, or registration in the UK or in any of the islands. And that, when I mean islands, I mean... I know the what Mac, the islands Jersey are. I know. So, I know. So in effect, because he doesn't meet 21A, he can only meet 21C. And 21C... 21C is a qualifying a qualifying category. It is not a category that exists by itself. It is saying that in order to be equal to 21A, you would have to be um, here for five years or more as a CUKC. That's what it's saying. Well, it's, not, it's not a category that stands on its own. Look at the, the charts. Look at the documentation. And it does see. stand on its own because it says that you are a citizen of the United Kingdom and have been settled in the, in the UK. So if 21A and 21B2 doesn't apply, you, we then look to see what else may apply. And in, in, the, in the particular case of your grandfather, 21C would apply because his CUK, his citizen of the United Kingdom and colony status, was through connection to St. Kitts, not to the UK. And so, and so here's the next part of the discrimination now. You ready for it? Go. If my yeah. grandmother and grandfather were married, we wouldn't be having this conversation because she would be married to a man with right of abode, isn't it? Yeah, because she would, as, as a Commonwealth citizen woman, married to a man with right no, of abode no, 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 in no, 1983. A CUKC, a CUKC woman, because she was born in British territory. A CUKC yeah, sorry, yeah. woman CU, yeah, with sorry, right yeah. of abode, yeah. today equal to Section 21A as well. Yeah. So you but see how ridiculous this all I is. I think what we need to do is bring the question back to how, what do you derive from your grandparents, or what can you derive from your grandparents? And as it stands under the legislation at the moment, I cannot see that you have right of abode under the Immigration Act. Yeah, you wouldn't okay. see that. You wouldn't see that. Now, sorry, say that again, please. I said you wouldn't see that. I mean, all I can do is, is explain to you how the legislation is applied. I yeah. think the issue that we've got is that what, I, what I'm saying to you, you already know, and is is not answering your questions, and I think we need somebody to actually address those issues. No, because somebody else in, is going to call me from the Home Office no, and try and talk me down. No. What what no? What I'll do is I will go and have a word with my senior officer. I'll say that obviously I've spoken to you. you you're fully well aware of what the legislation says, but the issues that you're bringing up regarding discrimination, racism within the legislation, historical issues such as that then these are things that I cannot discuss with you, nor can I answer. And I think we need somebody to be able to address those issues, probably in writing to you. Well, I'm going, okay. to, I'm going to the BBC and the Independent, and I will address it with them. I will address the fact that you degraded the rights of my grandfather, who came here to rebuild this nation and put it back on its feet. The Prime Minister already said these people are British, they're a part of us, okay? Yeah. And yet, at the same time, at the same time, yeah. These people are having to fill out applications and apply for what they already are, a lot of them. Okay. I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of them. I'm, I'm okay. watching what's going on. Okay. Well, what I'd like to do is, if you can leave it with me, and I will obviously um, get somebody to respond to the points that you've raised with me today. I've left it with you guys um, for 15 years. Okay. Well, as I say, um, if, uh, what I will do is I'll certainly put forward you know, the issues that you've raised with me now. Because I think somebody will need to address those, um, you know, really talking about the actual legislation. It's clear to me that you've already gone through this with probably other people as well. well um, I've who, lived who it. I've lived it. I've been detained yeah. for three months because of all of right. this discrimination. Okay. Um, can I ask your name, please? Yeah, my name is Robert Marsh, M-A-R-S-H. Robert Marsh. And your title? Is I'm a senior caseworker. Senior caseworker. H-E-O yeah. or... H-E-O. H-E-O. H-E-O senior caseworker, yeah. At Liverpool. At Liverpool, yeah. Thank you. And what I'll do is, as I say, I'll, um, I'll go and have a chat with 
one of my senior officers now, um, because I, I don't think these these issues have ever been addressed before. The ones that you've raised with me today. No, because I think because they all get talked down. They all yeah. get talked down from from Liverpool. But when okay. the skin is light enough, it doesn't get talked down. In oh, fact, no. it doesn't even have to be light enough because the legislation is clear for the lighter skin. Okay. Well, as I say, if you can leave that with me, and um, I will um, obviously. I don't think you, you you'd like a response in writing. Um, Absolutely, so I would. Phone call. I would yeah. like. I would like a response in writing. I would yeah. actually like my rights to be restored and acknowledged. That is what okay. I would really like. And I would like okay. to be over this hurdle because it's stressing okay. me out. Well, if you can leave it with me, and um, as I say, I will um, arrange to have um, a response, a written response to you, because I think that may then actually address the issues that you you you, you are concerned about. The actual technicalities of the Immigration Act, and, and you, you know, it's it's clear to me that you've already gone through this before. At the same time, aware of what it says. at the same time, I'm a without status. Okay. I'm destitute. Right. Okay. I'll pass that on as well. Okay. Cheers. Okay. If you can leave it with me then, and as I say, would you like a um, a letter to be issued to you, or would an email suffice? Whichever. No, an email would suffice, actually. Yeah. Okay. I will. I will uh, try and arrange that for you as quickly as we can. Okay. If it's one that's going to upset me, I don't even think I want to know because I'm already well, upset. I, th I, th I mean, I think the issues. The, the, the you know, I can explain to you. You know the how the Immigration Act and the British Nationality Act is applied and what it says. I think it's more of a but, policy. But but I think it's it's I think you're right. It's more of a, a how the rules are applied and also you know you've raised issues which I can't discuss with you. You know the issues about discrimination or perceived discrimination, racism with within the um, you know within the the previous legislation because obviously it was written. 40, 50 years ago in some respects. Um, so but that's not something that I can I can answer or engage with you in. So but would you say that get to... would you say that a person with right of abode is a patriot? Well, somebody that that is what right of abode was is also known as. It's called patriality. Patriality, indeed. It's the same thing. Indeed. So patriality is right of abode. Indeed. Yeah. So, but I think I think what I need to do is obviously get somebody who can is in a position to engage with those issues that you've raised. So, patriality comes from the word patriot, right? Somebody who's enthusiastic about or, or the nation. Or through family, or, or through father, patriot. So, through father or through? I don't know the exact mm. term, but you know it, that's what it was known as. So, right of abode is exactly the same as patriality which I think it was known as back in the 1970s. So you're talking about paternity as in father. Yeah, I think that's what it means. That's why there was so so much discrimination against women. Well, I mean, uh, as I say, you know, it's acknowledged that... Uh, you it's know, acknowledged, but... The British it's, Nationality Act yeah, was it's, in... The, it's acknowledged, but ahead. it's still going on. Come on. Well, when is this I going mean, to end? The, the, issue, the issue is, as I say, all, all I can do is explain to you what the, what the legislation says and how it's applied. But it, that is not something which is going to satisfy you. So what I need to do is obviously have somebody to address these issues and be able to engage with you on them. Okay, okay. thank you. And I'll Can try I and do that for you. Thank you. Can I take the next call? Thank you. Take care. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Hello. Hi, yeah. Is that Mr. Hubert, uh, Herbert Small? Indeed it is. No, Hi, I'm Mr. Herbert Small. My name is Jacqueline, of course. I'm from Hamwell Face. How are you today? Hi, that's interesting. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. A bit warm, but fine. Great. So, uh, you be your call's been passed to myself. Uh, from I'm I'm on the vulnerable person team. Uh, because obviously you've mentioned that you're going to be made homeless shortly. Indeed. Right. Okay. So, am I? Are you all right to discuss that with me today? Sorry. Are you all right to discuss that with me today? Um, Absolutely. So, right. Okay. So, what's your situation, Mr. Herbert Small, at the moment? My situation is I'm destitute and without status in the United Kingdom. Yeah, um, I'm talking about your homeless situation, not your immigration status. Can I just tell the other person to hold on, please? I'm just going to switch lines quickly. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Auntie. Yeah, so are you, you're making the train. I haven't left yet. I'm just on the phone with the home office quickly. Oh, okay. Thank you. Cool, cool. Thanks.
Yeah, hello? 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 Hi, sorry about that. No, that's the... Oh, no, you're fine. Okay, so where are you currently living at the moment? Is it private, rented, or council, or housing association? It's a flat that used to belong to my ex-partner, but we're no longer together. Right. Hence is all my other relationships because of this situation. Yeah. Okay. So is it your ex-partner that's wanting you to leave, or is it... Um, is it the owner of the flat that's wanting you to leave? It's both. It's both, right, okay. It's both. And have you approached the council? I have, many times. And, and what have they said to you? You don't have any status in the United don't Kingdom. Status. Right. Okay. And have you got a time scale of when, when you're going to have to move out from? Immediately. It's it, right, okay, so it's an immediate problem. Right, okay. okay. Are you receiving any benefits or anything at the moment? I don't know how to or do that you have without the same data. situation. Right. It's all right. Some people do, some people don't. I'm, I'm just wanting to check that. I don't okay. know how they do it, but I've been trying. No, no, no. Uh, um, it amazes me sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, I know somebody else is looking at your case at the moment. That's, that's not me. I'm just dealing with the vulnerable side for yourself. You did have a family application outstanding, is that right? But you withdrew that? It was sent back, yeah. Right. Uh, was it, so it wasn't yourself that withdrew that? Um, I don't know if it's initiated by my call to the Windrush team. I don't know exactly. For right, sure. right. I, I, my head's all over the place right now. I can't remember anything. Okay, okay. All right. So are you wanting to still go ahead with your family application considering? Why would I want to do that? Well, I don't know. But if you've not withdrawn it, I put in have... I put in an application because right. I've been fighting this fight for far too long. My children are yeah. suffering. I'm suffering. Okay, yeah. and I was backed I've... into a corner until right, the scandal okay. broke. Yeah. So okay. I don't see why I should be asking for permission if I was born a British citizen and I should have rights to be here. Okay. All right, Mr. Herbert Small, leave that with me, uh, and I'll start talking to people and seeing, seeing if there is anything we can do for you with regards to your housing situation. Is there anything else you want? I'm just thinking everybody's saying that to me today and for the last few weeks. Leave that with me, and nothing's being done. That's why I had to approach the Prime Minister. Right, okay. I was only being aware, aware today mm. of you, Mr. Herbert Small, so... Um, I can't speak for my colleagues, but uh, I was only asked to look into your case today with regards to your vulnerable side, with regards to your homeless situation. So I apologise if you feel like you're being let down by us, but um, we will do whatever we can and we'll try and help you as much as we can. Thank you. All right, Ms. Herbert Small, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, bye-bye.